The Mitsunobu is a special reaction because it can take an alcohol to a nucleophilic substitution product directly, with no base, no intermediate step. No chlorates, no mesylates, no tosylates, no triflates. Directly from the alcohol to the nucleophilic substitution product. The Mitsunobu reaction is performed by mixing triphenophosphine with an azo compound, typically dead. Diethyl azo dicarboxylate. and a nucleophile pronated. That nucleophile must have an appropriate pKa. The nucleophile can be hydrozoic acid, it can be phenols, it works great for thiols, it works with ketoesters, it doesn't work very well with malonate derivatives. They're not acidic enough. It doesn't work with alcohols. Of course not. If the reaction worked with alcohols, the whole thing would be a mess. How does the Mitsunobu reaction proceed? The phosphine doesn't have to be triphenophosphine, but let's consider triphenophosphine. The phosphine attacks the azo compound. The electrons move on to the most electronegative atom, the nitrogen, and we get an amido anion. The whole intermediate is ionic. It's not exceptionally electrophilic on the phosphorus because it's sweater ionic. But that amido anion can deprotonate the nucleophile. Providing that nucleophile is of appropriate pKa. When it does that, we generate positive phosphodium species, more electrophilic. The nucleophile minus is also useful. We'll need that in a second. The alcohol adds to the phosphorus and loses a proton. That sets up the key intermediate for a fragmentation reaction. The nucleophile now enters the picture again. SN2 substitution with inversion, generation of triphenylphosphine oxide, and shifting the electrons onto the amido nitrogen again, which is protonated by the protons that were removed from the alcohol. The whole reaction is beautifully neutral. It proceeds at 25 degrees C in THF, sometimes in dichloromethane, easy to set up. The main disadvantage of the Mitsunobu reaction is it breaks what I call Burgess's rule. I made that up myself. Burgess's rule states that the more things you put into a reaction, the less likely it is that you'll get something pure out of it. And indeed, triphenylphosphine oxide is pretty difficult to remove. Let's look at the Mitsunobu reaction in a different way. What happens to the phosphine? Well, it's oxidized to triphenylphosphine oxide. What happens to the azo compound? It's reduced to a hydrazine derivative. So this strong PO bond is formed and a weak NN bond is broken and two NH bonds are formed at the same time. This is a redox reaction. We don't usually think of it as being a redox reaction because the substrate isn't oxidized or reduced. It's just a bystander in this process. It facilitates oxidation of triphenylphosphine to the oxide and reduction of that azo compound. And in doing so, we get this useful SN2 nucleophilic attack. Thank you very much for listening. Bye-bye.